What happens when alternating current changes polarity? Why doesn't the fuse blow? And what happens to the neutral? So here, in this short video, we offer a simple explanation. Some very recent questions that have been asked have included such things as what happens to the electrons in the negative half cycle? If AC voltage goes plus minus plus minus, what happens when the neutral goes plus volts if the neutral is connected to the earth? In AC, do the electrons travel to the load and back every time the voltage changes polarity? I was taught that phase has the potential and neutral is zero volts. If AC reverses direction, this means that the neutral will have the potential. Surely that is dangerous if neutral is connected to the ground. When talking about alternating waveforms, we need to know what levels of voltage we are discussing. We will use RMS voltages in this video. RMS, or root mean square, is a way of comparing the energy or heating power of AC voltages to DC voltages. Your test meters will show voltages in RMS values, not peak to peak. A domestic property in the UK has a nominal voltage, a named voltage, of 230 volts AC RMS, although most often it will measure a maximum of around 240 volts AC RMS when tested with your meter. As we are not doing any calculations, we will stick with 240 volts in the video. An earlier video showed how electrons move around a circuit and through a copper wire, and we will leave a link to that video in the description to this video. The copper atoms will have electrons orbiting around them. The outermost electrons, called valence electrons, or conduction electrons, are only loosely attached to the atom and can move easily between other atoms. With no electrical force applied to the copper, the valence electrons form a loose cloud of electrons that drift around with no particular direction or urgency. Sometimes left, sometimes right, sometimes up, sometimes down. Under magnification, the lattice-like structure of the atom can be seen. The nucleus, the protons and neutrons of the atom, are fixed in place, part of the lattice, and the electrons move around this framework. When a force, a voltage, is applied to the circuit, the atoms in the copper wire will stop their random movement and all move together in the same direction. If it is an AC voltage, an alternating current, it is pushing the electrons backwards and forwards through the lattice, oscillating at 50 Hz. But the individual electrons only move a few microns before they change direction again, every 10 milliseconds in the UK and continental Europe, where the supply frequency is 50 Hz, 20 milliseconds per cycle. How fast is electricity? Why do the lights come on instantly if the electrons hardly move? Imagine the electrons are a piece of wood in a pipe. If we move the wood 5 mm at point A, the wood will immediately move 5 mm from point B to point C. If we move it back to point A, the wood instantly moves from C to B. The particles of wood never move more than 5 mm, just move backwards and forwards. Most particles will never reach point C. They will just oscillate around the same position. But that small movement at point B and C is enough to do valuable work in the load. You must understand that electrons flow from the most negative terminal of the transformer through the circuit or load and back to the most positive terminal. This most negative is not always the neutral and earth connection. Sometimes the line voltage is more negative than the neutral. This means that when the line is in a positive half cycle, that is to say line is more positive than the neutral, electrons flow from the bottom of our transformer along the neutral wire through the load and return to the top of the transformer along the line conductor. 
When the line voltage is in a negative half cycle, line is more negative than the neutral, so the electrons flow from the top of the transformer along the line through the load and re-enter the bottom of the transformer along the neutral conductor. So electron flow around the circuit will look like this. In our example here, when the line is in a positive half cycle, reaching plus 240 volts RMS, the electrons flow anticlockwise around this circuit. In a negative half cycle, the line reaches minus 240 volts RMS and the electrons flow clockwise. Pause the video and take a moment to understand this. It's so very important when analysing electronic circuits. When electrical science was in its infancy, it was assumed that the electrical current flowed from the positive to the negative. Electrons had yet to be discovered. Nobody knew any different. And most of the world still thinks this way, positive to negative, especially when analysing electronic circuit diagrams. Around 1900, the English scientist J.J. Thompson discovered electrons whilst researching cathode ray tubes. He determined that electrons actually leave the cathode, the negative, and travel around the circuit back to the anode, or positive. Electrons need a space to move into, in the outer shell of a metal atom. We call this space a hole. So, if an electron moves to fill a hole, it must have left a hole behind it. That hole is filled by another electron, and so the hole moves again. This gives the effect of holes moving positive to negative, and electrons negative to positive. This is the same effect as a queue of people at the cinema. If someone moves forward to take an empty seat, they leave a hole, a space, that the next person can step into. As they step forward to fill the space, they leave a hole behind, and someone moves to fill that hole. The holes are moving to the back of the queue, while the people, the electrons, are moving in the opposite direction. The line or phase voltage fluctuates around the fixed zero neutral point. Sometimes the line is more positive than the neutral, as shown at number one, and sometimes more negative, with the neutral at number two being more positive than the now negative line voltage at number three. And twice per cycle, line and neutral are both zero volts, as shown by number four. So neutral never changes, it's the line voltage that does all the changing. In this simple example of generating a single phase alternating current, a magnet will rotate inside a pair of coils. As the generator begins to rotate, lines of magnetic flux will interact with the windings of the coils and electricity will start to be produced. As the magnet rotates further, greater interaction happens and a greater voltage is produced until it reaches a maximum of 240 volts in the positive direction in this example. The magnet continues to rotate, but now the interaction is reducing and the voltage fades towards zero volts. Rotation continues and the positions of the magnetic poles have changed so the voltage now builds in the negative direction until it reaches minus 240 volts, after which it fades towards zero volts and the whole cycle begins again. Positive, negative, positive, negative. 20 milliseconds per cycle. Now imagine the phase voltage rotating around a fixed zero volts neutral terminal. Let's start with the line voltage at zero volts. The neutral and earth are connected together and will be fixed at zero volts. At 45 degrees, plus 170 volts. And plus 240 volts at 90 degrees. Now 170 volts and then 0 volts, passing negative 170 volts and a maximum of negative 240 volts, reducing to minus 170 volts and then 
zero volts. And so the whole cycle repeats itself. Positive, negative, positive, negative. And another question that we are asked, how many electrons is that? How many electrons will be changing direction in one amp? In a 50 hertz system, electrons will change direction every half cycle, every 10 milliseconds. That's 20 milliseconds for a full cycle of positive and negative. One amp is about 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons passing a reference point every second. That's 624 with 16 zeros after it. Quite a big number. If you were to collect one electron every second, day in, day out, that would take you almost 200 billion years before you'd collected just one amp's worth of electrons. And twice that amount of electrons for two amps. Backwards, forwards, positive, negative. So, in an AC system, only the voltage of the line or phase voltage alternates, and this is between a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Sometimes plus 240 volts, sometimes minus 240 volts. It's the plus or minus 240 volts that drives the electrons around the circuit. It is this electrical voltage that will force electrons through your body if you touch the line conductor. It is this force that will give you the electric shock. The neutral and earth terminals always remain fixed at zero volts. Touching just the earth's casing of your washing machine is not going to give you an electric shock in normal fault-free conditions. Sometimes the line is more positive than neutral, sometimes it's more negative. Although the electrons only move at a few microns per second about a mean position, their effect is felt immediately at the load, at almost the speed of light, even though the load might be a considerable distance from the generator. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video interesting and useful and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get easy access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer or smart device. We are always adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.